Hello everybody, it's Aaron. Welcome to another episode of Feed the Beast. Just watching the beautiful sunrise. By the way, happy 400 subscribers. It probably happened while I was recording the last video, or the last episode earlier today. But anyway, happy 400 subscribers. Good for me, good for you, good for us. Uh, today I want to set up the tree farms. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the farms and then I'm going to work out the logistics of piping things. So let's get out of the way before we get stung by bees because I've got some in there that will, that will really sting us. I made a few more lasers to go with the, um, with the table here, the assembly table. It is super fast. Um, if you remember how long it took last time to make a regular gate watch so fast 61 MJ per tick it's beautiful I don't really need to make any I made a bunch in between episodes um, I made a diamond and gate just to kind of play around I'm gonna need um, a gold and gate at some point and then um, some of the iron gates uh, but we will get into that. I also haven't really decided um, how much of of the th the stuff is going to be build craft and how much is going to be red power. Um, since I learned how to use gates, build craft is easier for a lot of things with the diamond pipes because you don't have to use um, solar power for like a sorting machine. So. I'm kind of on the fence about that one, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. How about that? So, let me go ahead and grab both of these. Um, both of these machines. We'll go ahead and set these up, and if we have time, we'll do the peat bog. First, let me show you what I did. Oh, whoa! I have two things to show you. First thing. I did some testing with the reed harvester and I have a hole here and this one hasn't grown because I just tested this out but basically the thing is on the same level as this reed plant it actually takes the top one there this top one and this top one so you can put it on the same level that your reed is planted on or you can put it on the level where the soil is I don't know how loud that is for you but it's loud for me uh, or you can put it on the same level as the soil your reeds are planted on either way it will get the the bottom row of reeds as well or the top top layer of the bottom level of reeds so I'm going to work on that in between episodes. I don't know how I'm going to power it yet. Ideally, I would like um, to produce enough biofuel to go in the steam boiler and use steam power to run everything, but um, we're going to have to get there. <clears throat> we're going to have to power the things for a while to make the fuel to go into the boiler. So that's a that's a that's a ways off. I don't think I went up far enough. The wheat farm. Here's what I did. The quarry finished. I made eight more low voltage solar arrays. And I grabbed um, a couple of the electric engines. And they're only putting out two MJ, which is fine because if I upgraded them they wouldn't have enough EU to run. Um, this is basically limited by how fast the wheat grows. I I kind of reconfigured the pipe here. This is the easiest way to do the piping. Uh, since this thing spits everything out, it'll actually spit it out the bottom into a pipe as well. But I don't know if the farm will accept items from the bottom. So I just actually filled the seeds up to test this out. On the diamond pipe, what, let's see what happens. See, we get we did get seeds. That's that's what I was testing. I put um, seeds to go to black, 
because I want them to keep this thing full and everything else to go to yellow, but I don't want anything to go to blue. So in the off chance something bounced back, um, I just put a piece of amber there because I had it on me. So anyway, that's just kind of a kind of a thing to make it an invalid invalid um, path, I guess. So everything comes out and it goes into this. Now this farm, as long as it has power, now it's all self-sustaining. We don't have to replace any of the soil that anything's planted on. It just runs. Here's what it looks like on the big mini map. For some reason, that uh, ravine that I covered up still shows. I think that's a mini map bug or something. And here's what we look like from the air. I got some of the um, that red brick from the mining age and actually turned it into brick. The red stone I turned into brick. And then I used some of the marble bricks for the center. I just kind of put the post for the torches uh, just because I wanted this thing to have light all day long. Even though these machines, obviously, the engines don't run at night because they're solar powered. That doesn't mean that I don't want the wheat to grow. I saw a post on Reddit I didn't have time to read. Apparently the combine will, will run five wheat farms. So as soon as the episode's over, I'm going to go read it. If that's the case, um, the one screenshot I saw, it was basically a tower of them. So if that's the case, then we're going to have four more wheat farms underground and all the wheat will end up wherever we need it to go. So Logger Arboretum. Um, and actually, I could probably put this on top of this, but I don't know. It may get reconfigured later. We'll see. Um, Logger Arboretum. We need humus. And how do we make humus? We need dirt and fertilizer. Fertilizer is appetite or sand and ash, which that will come into play later. Or compost. How do we make compost? Look at that wheat and dirt. How about that? You get ash from peat fired engines, so it's just a byproduct that happens as they run. So the way this whole system works, you can use the wheat and the 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 peat bog and the turbery um, after the peat matures. When the turbery takes the peat, you're left with a dirt block, and you actually end up with extra dirt. So you can use your extra dirt to come over here with some wheat to make compost, and then. Um, turn some more dirt into humus. So I forget the influence or the radius of this stuff. So let's go make some humus. Let's grab some wheat. We have quite a bit actually. Um, I haven't been, I haven't been like playing all day, but I made the episode about, I don't know, 12 hours ago. And uh, my world was probably running for six of that. And there was no sleeping. It was day night cycles. So I don't know, there's some math involved there. So we're going to need a bunch of dirt, and that's it, right? Just dirt and compost and wheat, okay. And there's no shortage of dirt, so I mean, <laughs> that's not a problem. What did I do, what did I do wrong? Oh, dirt in the middle. So we get four of those. I'm just going to go ahead and make all 64. And then what was it? Eight around? Yep. And I don't think that's going to be enough. So let's get some more dirt. And the humus, after the trees grow and get harvested, that turns to sand which you need um, to make bog earth. So everything is kind of connected. That's why when I, when I talked about it earlier, I said it's the forestry circle of life. So what do we need? We're going to probably need some... 
Let's bring some of that and some of this. If you didn't, um, if you weren't paying attention, you don't need wooden pipes or redstone engines for the forestry machines f for them to eject things. They just spit it out. Um, I think I put the other things in the IC2 chest. Let's get two electric engines. We're going to need two solar panels. Thought I had some insulated copper cable around here somewhere. I only have one. And of course I'm full. Am I going to need a chest? I don't think I'm going to need the glass right now. That's probably my filler glass. That's alright, I'll get it back. So, let me just make a few more cables and then we'll run out there and get this thing going. I wanted to kind of get it going because since I don't exactly remember the dimensions, I may have to move it. So, I'm going to give it the humus, but I'm not going to give it any saplings yet. So, this one, it's three layers of soil, and then it's like seven across, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine across. So, that's 15, 15 by 15. One of them is a little bigger than the other, but I don't remember which. I think this one is too short of that because it's only you've got the same nine in the center but then you've only got a row of two I think instead of a row of three so we'll find out in a minute let me sleep because you know being out out there at night time is bad a lot of scary scary things since I have this wide open space and there are no obstacles. They can just run right up on us. See, look at that. There they are. I'm not scared of you, skeleton. Also, when I put my world download up, you're going to notice these signs. I made myself some notes. I need some imperial bees for royal jelly to make the alviary. Um, that thing, it's no joke. It takes a long time to be able to make it. You have to make it in blocks and it's, you have to make it um, three by three. So you need nine blocks. This is one block and it takes this impregnated casing, which doesn't take anything from bees. But then you need the scented paneling, and you have to put wood with royal jelly and some of this other stuff. So I'm going to need a bunch of pollen. I think you get that from industrious bees and a bunch of royal jelly that you get from imperial bees. So the couple of imperial bees that I had are gone. So I have to like work my way back up to them. Um, the reason I want the alviary is because... Right now, I have wintry bees and tropical bees and uh, modest bees, and the modest bees work in the desert or maybe the nether. Tropical work in the jungle, and wintry bees obviously work in snow. Well, any bee will work inside the alviary, so um, it's basically like climatized or something. All right, so the arboretum does all the work. And let's just put it in line with the other machine right here. And I'll go ahead and I'll leave a gap. And then one, two. So I'm just going to go with that. We're going to see what happens. I forgot a uh, conductive pipe. I did have the engines hooked up directly to the machines, but they didn't like it, so I um, I scrapped that idea. Let me get some of those conductive pipes. 
And I think I probably have levers in a bag. Yes, I do. Uh, so once we get all this set up, we'll also work on, um, there's a way to automate the production of bog earth, which I'm already familiar with that. And there's obviously has to be a way to, to automate the production of humus. So, and I'm saying it humus this episode. So I'm just going to hook up the one for right now, and then once it builds the um, the structure or the pattern or whatever you want to call it, then um, I'll move it down a level. I just want to make sure that I got it right. Uh, what am I doing? So much cabling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to peat-fired engines or steam at some point, but... To get it going, I've got to do something in the meantime, so this is what I'm doing. Alright, so these ought to be giving 2MJ a piece. They are, just like the other ones. And this one's actually going a lot more quickly. Obviously, because it has, I think, a little more power. Right, okay. So I was correct. It only has a two block ring so I'll let that finish and then we'll take it down a layer make sure I got the right outside ring all right cool and I think if I just pop it in here where did it go I think if I just pop it in here it may actually clear the area above it. I know the peat bog does that. Let's see if this one does it too. Well, it's definitely clearing the area underneath. I should have just put an energy cell on this thing, but that's okay. And this stuff takes forever to break, even with this thing. Let me see if I have an efficiency pick in my bag. Efficiency four. Yeah, we'll take this one. A little faster. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the logger right there. Uh, no, that's not a good idea. The way the logger works, formerly, it spit out apples and stuff from the top. So I'm going to have to move all this down. It spit out apples and saplings from the top and wood from the sides. So basically you put your diamond pipe on, basically the same situation is over there. You put your diamond pipe on top of the arboretum, tell it to send all the saplings into it, and then when it gets full. This one may be different because it has um, slots for humus also. This is the one we're going to have to work out. Peat bog, relatively easy. This one... A little more complicated because it outputs sand and let's get rid of some of this cobblestone. It outputs sand so you you don't necessarily have to get rid of that but if there's a pipe hooked up to it it'll try to do it. So we'll just throw our logger down right there. And I'll just set it up like 
almost exactly like the wheat farm. Oops. That was a little excessive. Let's leave a space for the engines. And now all we have to do is give some saplings and it'll automatically plant them. And if you remember last episode, this is the one that if it plants the saplings, you cannot bone meal them. And you should only use vanilla saplings for this. The other saplings either don't grow or I heard they'll crash the game, but... Um, rubber tree saplings will work, but the extra biomes ones like the big fur saplings or acacia, probably not. You can try it if you want, but I'm not going to risk it. So let's put some some saplings in here. And, and when I shift clicked, it went to the humus spot. So the humus is always full, not a big deal, but it's not always full, so... Let's put that right there, and we'll go ahead and set up our pipe. And I don't have a sapling. So let's put saplings to black, and we'll put arrows to blue, since there should be no arrows anywhere around here. So as you can see, the thing is planting saplings. It's not right now because it's night, of course. That's one of the things about solar power, you know. It's awesome, but then when the sun goes down, you don't have any more power. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that thing plant the trees. I'm going to set up the other one while that's happening. And as soon as a few of them grow, then we'll turn on the logger and we'll see how it works. So, well, let me see. That was two day cycles, probably around, I don't know, 20 minutes already. So, I'm not going to sit and wait for this to happen. So, I will see you in just a minute. Welcome back, everybody. Um... I've got the other one set up over there, and I just hooked a peat engine up to it because, um, well, I only have one electrical engine left and only a couple solar panels, so I figured I'd just go ahead and use it since I had a couple of them. I'm sure one of you geniuses is going to point out that the solar panels are going to be obstructed by the leaves at some point, and you're right. I did realize that, so... Go ahead and leave me a comment about it if you want. It's all good. So we've got some trees. If you notice, the humus underneath them has already turned to sand. So when the logger takes the trees, um, it's going to start at the bottom and work its way up. And then as the leaves decay, it'll pick up any apples or saplings or whatever. So let me go ahead and fire these things up and we'll watch it happen. Um, I went ahead and cleared this out. Let me know what color scheme we should go with for this one. Um, I really like the red and white. We can totally do that, but if you guys have uh, any suggestions, leave them in the comments and I won't do it until I've read them. So it got that tree, it got this tree, it should come around to this tree next. No, that tree. So it's gonna go west to east, I guess. And I set up the diamond pipe so that saplings go to black, but nothing is coming out. Oh, there we go. We got apples and the sapling goes down. So apparently um, I was correct and they didn't change anything. All of the, the logs are going to come out of the side of this thing. So I'm just going to pop down a barrel and it should kick them out the side automatically. There they go. 
So that does make it a little easier. Um, one thing to note, if you do put the logger on top of the Arboretum and then run a pipe next to it, the um, if you use a sandstone pipe, which is not supposed to connect to the Arboretum, the Arboretum will still, um, it'll still connect basically, even though it's not supposed to. So that's going to fill up. I should have filled it up with saplings to make sure that um, that they're going to keep going like the wheat. But I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. So this thing's radius. The logger, it actually extends out into the wheat farm. So any saplings or apples or whatever that pop off, uh, they're going to go, they're still going to get sucked up by the arboretum. Uh, let me grab some more saplings if I have any. I don't think I have enough. I wanted to fill that thing up. I wonder if I can just put dirt or something in there to like tide it over. Nope, no saplings. Um, during the break, uh, I was doing some texting with that girl that I'm seeing. And her dad plays Minecraft. How awesome is that? So, um, potentially, I'm not saying I'm going to do any episodes or anything with him, but um, how cool would it be to play Minecraft with your girlfriend's dad? And, you know, she's my age, so, I mean, he's got to be in his 50s or 60s. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so the saplings do go to the chest once the arboretum is full. So each logger will keep the arboretums full of saplings and will actually generate an excess at some point. Um, if you're going to mix saplings, it's very important if you use a diamond pipe that you set them in the, in the rule here. Um, I don't really like to mix them, so what I may do is use like birch over here and then the oak over here so I could get both kinds. I've never tried the um, the winter trees, um, the vanilla trees that occur over there. I've never tried those, but we could definitely try that. And as you see, this solar array is now blocked by the leaves. Um, also, important things, do not put a wrath lamp above this because the trees will not grow. Uh, and there's, oh... If you do the, the, do the trick where you stack up dirt next to the sapling to try to grow super trees, it just won't grow them at all. So don't do that either. Um, the other thing that makes them grow faster is called a forester. And it's not cheap. It takes four diamonds glass and an arboretum or farm or something, which takes, you know, the gold tubes. And that's that thing runs on catalyst. which you have to put you have to put in the in the capsule or can or whatever um, apparently you can make it with pollen and bones fertilizer those are all new recipes for me I always use this one so I have a ton of bones that's not a problem fertilizer depending how much appetite I've gotten okay you could use the sand from the tree farm with ash to make the fertilizer, but you obviously don't get as much as the other recipe. Or saltpeter, how about that? I didn't know that one. So there is one working tree farm, and one tree farm that is probably missing some humus and saplings. Nope, it's out of, it's out of peat in the engine. So I don't really mind um, keeping the same color scheme that's what I would do I'd make all the insides white and just put the red stone brick around it but if you guys have any ideas if, if we want to color code the farms or something like that uh, like I said leave me a comment and then um, I won't actually put anything there uh, until I um, until I've read and if, if anything sounds really good then I'll do it uh, next time, we'll fire up the, the peat bog and the turbery, and that occupies the same amount of space as the wheat farm. 
So this whole thing, it's just going to be one big square, like a grid. Obviously, I don't have anything around that yet, but um, but we will. So we'll just have our, our little farm section, and then um, I'll probably also, in between episodes, go ahead and hollow out underneath, um, and then we can make a central place for all the sorting and processing and distributing and all of that stuff. So that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, please leave any questions, comments, or suggestions down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.